All right, Shalom, Shalom, let's spread the Kadash. Start off by giving our praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai Bahashim, Raka Kadash, right? And um, <laughs> funny picture, but um, I'm going to name this Stop Defending the Other Nations, man. And this is something that really, really, really gets to me and boils my skin, man. This shit, like, really gets to me, you know, but through the spirit, you know, we understand that the Lord has control of everything, right? So I'm watching a show pretty much just to give you a backstory. I'm watching a show and, you know, these guys on the internet are getting into it, right? And one guy is standing up for his, for another fellow Israelite, Judah, black man, right? So so-called black man, right? Against this Chinese dude, you know, and they, some guys may know what I'm talking about, right? And the thing that I hate the most is, it's like, well, I dislike the most is, is you see another black man, so-called black man, a come against another black man for getting on somebody that's outside our nation, right? And they, and they, they stand up for him. No, I know this guy. No, you can't come at him. No, he's part of us. No, he is a brother. We want the bam. And then to the point where this is the dumbest shit in the world, man, to the point where you could have two black men, two niggas fighting against each other over a person from another nation because they have two different views on this person right and the shit's crazy and then in a bigger in a bigger picture you get it with um with the israelites too with us the israelites you know you have groups that say all nations could be saved and then you have groups that say all nations cannot be saved which we know through bible prophecy salvation is only for israel but then that makes us hate each other so we're the same people by blood but now we hate each other all because of the topic of if the other nations could be saved or not. So we fighting and warring and having an evil eye towards each other based off if these other nations could be saved. Man, fuck those other nations, man. They're all going to be slaves, bro. China, the um, the Mo Moabites, they're going to slavery. The Ammonites are going to slavery. We don't need them to be a part of our shit. We don't need them to be with us to have a peace or try to please them, man. They asses are going into captivity. Esau is going into captivity. Whoever Esau is on the world in the world, which we know who he is clearly, but since they want to act like they don't. That the Edomites are going into captivity. All other nations are going into captivity under the Israelites. Our enemies that did wrong to us are going into captivity, man. There's no way around. I'll give you a quick precept, too. I give you this is a very good um, precept, and there's no way around this, man. And it's talking about salvation since we're bringing up uh, what salvation is, right? This is Luke 1. 67 and his father Zechariah is filled with the Holy Ghost. So he filled with the Holy Ghost, right? And he prophesied saying, so we so we could bank on this, right? We could take this to the bank and cash it in. He's filled with the Holy Ghost and he prophesied this. So we can all believe in this, right? It says, Blessed be the Lord, uh, Lord God of Israel, the Lord of who? No, he not letting everybody come into our shit, man. Then we want to fight against each other because some, some niggas think we should accept these people and, and then we think that we shouldn't, right? But let's see what, what the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost um, is um, delivering, right? It says, for he has visited and redeemed his people, but it just called on the Lord God of Israel. Israel is a people, right? And he said he has redeemed his people. Not all people, but his people. It says, and has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. So who is salvation for? Israel. Who is his people? Israel. Who's going to be redeemed? Israel. It's that simple, man. It says, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. So this has always been this way, man. Because this is the way that the Lord set it up. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Okay, so who who who's our enemies and who is those that hate us? Just it's just made up people, right? Or or or, or, or let me say how the white Christian Christians say it's just it's just um strangers. No, 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 matter of fact, they don't even say strangers, it's just individuals. Individuals that hate us, then those are our enemies. Just the individuals. No, man. It's a, talking about the people, the other nations that hate us. So whether you say the so-called white man, the Caucasian man is an Edomite or not, we know that he's our enemy. It don't take a rocket science to understand who is our enemy, who took us in slavery, right? Who killed us, who raped us, who robbed us, right? 
who destroyed our families, who destroyed our heritage, who cut, you know, who, who's been behind all the wickedness and oppressing blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. It don't take a rocket science. We all can point to the same people that's sitting on Mount Rushmore. And there are people that, that, that benefit from it, man. Those is who the Bible is saying is our enemies, that we should be saved from them, not with them. Not that they're going to get a piece. See, this little shit that I was seeing with them arguing, going back and forth, it's really a part of a bigger problem. And the bigger problem is, is what? They even think that they could be saved and inherit our kingdom with us. They go to Galatians 3 and misinterpret it when Galatians 3 tells you what? It says, according to the promise. What is the promise? The promise is what? This, this is the promise in verse 71 that we should be saved for our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform the mercies mercy promised to our father and remember his holy covenant. The covenant was given to who Israel, right? It says the oath, which he swear to our father, Abraham, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hands of our enemy might save him without fear. But if you say our enemies are going to inherit the kingdom with us, how are we being delivered out their hands? How are we going to serve the Lord without fear if we're still with them? You see what I'm saying? Now, yeah, it did say oh, our father Abraham, but you got to remember going back to verse 68, it says, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. So when you understand prophecy or understand the Bible, this is Bible 101, simple, right? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the sea line. That is there for a reason. That means that you have to come from Abraham, not only Abraham, but you have to come from Isaac because what? Going back to Galatians 3, actually, if you skip over to Galatians 4, it breaks down and it tells you that um, Ishmael cannot be joint heirs to the kingdom. If he can't be joint heirs to the kingdom, that means he can't be saved to inherit the kingdom. So Ishmael is out of there. So it goes through Isaac. Very simple. Very simple, right? And then from Isaac, he had two sons. Esau and Jacob, if you go to Romans chapter 9, it tells you that the promise is for Israel only. It pertains to Israel, right? And then when you get down to Esau and Jacob, I mean, it don't take rocket science. We all know what happened there, right? Esau sold his birthright. What does it mean that Esau sold his birthright? Or does it mean that, okay, Esau sold his birthright, but, you know, Edomites could still inherit the kingdom? No, it says he sold his birthright for a reason, man. It's over with for him. Now it goes to Israel, right? Well, um, Jacob, which name, which was changed to Israel. And then that's where you get the 12 tribes of Israel from, right? And then we went into captivity under the other nations. So the Lord is not coming to save the other nations, even though we be, we're scattered among all nations. He's coming to get his lost sheep that are scattered amongst all the nations, which are the Israelites. Yes, we do come looking like everybody, right? But this Chinese guy was trying to say, you know, he, he's really like a low-key racist, but he don't put it out there. You know, he all for his people who out the BAM. Him being all for his people, bro, mean that he's against your people. And you and people don't understand that. People don't believe that. Say, no, that's not necessarily true. It is, man. If Look, you got to think of it like in an animal way, bro. And I'm not saying that, oh, well, don't have no, like a beast type, a beast state away i mean more like in a nature way with animals right take animals right because how many times have the lord um been likened into a lamb or a lion so it's not a bad thing to say that right now let's just say in the animal kingdom right you have different species right just like you have different people yes we're all humans right you got big cats you got different cats right we're all humans, but we're not one. You have different species, man. You have Israelites, you got Edomites, you got Ish Ish Ishmaelites, you got Moabites, Ammonites, Hamites. The list goes on and on and on, right? Now, when you look in the jungle, you look at the lions. Lions roam with what? Lions. Hyenas roam with what? Hyenas. Giraffes roam, roam with what? Giraffe. Wilderbeasts roam with what? Wilder, wilder beasts, right? Now, we know that they're competing. Co to compete is to be against. You see what I'm saying? So, if they are benefiting more, then that means that somebody else is suffering more. That's how the food supply works, right? If the lions are eating and eating more and eating all the food, then the hyenas are going to be suffering. That's why they war and fight over the same food sources, man. 
That's how it works, man. If you got too many wolves, right, and they're eating all the deer, then your population of deer is going to go down. That's going to affect humans that eat deer, right? Or whatever the deer feed on, their prey is going to grow more because now there's less deer. This is how the food chain works, man. This is how it all works, bro. If you got less deer, then you're going to have a lot of like predators that eat deer. They're going to start starving. This is how it all works, right? Bears eat deer. Mooses and shit. That's how the Lord set it up, man. So you can just see it from nature. So you got to be all for your people. Latinos, Native Americans, and Blacks. Yes, we're different tribes, but we're the same people, right? Just like you have um, um, Asians, but you have different groups of them, right? So just like with Esau, Esau has um, different um, different groups of them. Because you got something called um, Amalek, right? Which was the grandson of Esau. So that's how it worked. Esau had like, um, I forgot the number, but he had, he set up his shit by dukes. If you know what a duke is, right? The families, right? So you have different families, but they're all go back to Esau. The Russians are Edomites too. The Americans, the Caucasians are Edomites too. The Ukrainians, they're Edomites too. The, um, the so-called Jewish, um, they're Edomites too, but they're different families, man. So it's the same thing with Israel. We got the 12 tribes of Israel, but we all make one, one people. And then if you go to prophecy, like in Ezekiel, um, uh, what's that? 37, the Lord said he's going to make us one. You see, in the kingdom, he's going to make us one, right? But that's who we're for. Anybody outside of that, man, fuck them. No, you can't come sit at our table. You see what I'm saying? So um, the guy I was watching, it was Hassan Campbell. And he was, um, he was standing up for his brother. You know, an Asian guy has said something about his brother. That's kind of like a part. He follows our culture. He, you could call him like a a convert at some, at some point in time. They got to the arguing about hip hop and he like, no hip hop. No, just because you're another nation and you follow hip hop, you don't own nothing of hip hop. Hip hop belongs to the so-called black man. Everybody know that. Now everybody else, you a guest, just like if you go to a hotel room. You don't own the hotel, man. You can stay at that hotel for two weeks straight. You are not an owner of the hotel. You are a guest. So when it comes to hip-hop, yeah, man, you may be a guest of hip-hop, but you're not an owner. Don't don't take claim a part, uh, a part of this. You know, you don't own no shares in this. You're not an owner at all. You're just a guest. That's it, right? And what happens with a guest? You could be asked to leave at any point of time. So the Chinese guy, he got to run in his mouth too much. He was talking shit about a fellow member of the hip hop community. And then, you know, Hassan Campbell came to his, um, to, to stand up for his brother. You know what I mean? He came up to stand up for his brother as he should, as we all should. That's how we're supposed to do. Right. Because this guy didn't understand just because you apart, just because you're, um, a guest here don't mean that you're a member and it don't mean that you're an owner in any part of this. So you don't have the right to speak on certain things that's going on in here because you ain't, this ain't you. You know what I mean? Go deal with your people. If your people be Asian people, go deal with your Asian people, man. Y'all don't look, bro. Y'all going into fucking captivity, man. That's where y'all going. When we get our power, ain't going to be nothing y'all could do. I don't care how tough you think you is. Right? So... What hurted me the most, or made me the most mad, is there was another brother. They all have, you know, they had the whole Brady Bunch thing going on the live stream, right? Now, this other brother gets all his body and starts going at Hassan Campbell for trying to stand up for his brother. How could you even move your tongue to stand up against a guy that's standing up for his brother, his people, against somebody outside? And you're going to start going at him? See, look, let me tell you a little story, man. Wrong or right? This is crazy. Let me tell you a little story, right? So, you know, I done been around a lot of, I done been around Edomites, you know, a lot, a lot of Edomites before. Um, and one thing I noticed, right, an Edomite would be the best friend with you, right? He'd be the best friend with you, right? But if some shit go down, he's going to stand with his fellow Edomites, man. You're going to be like, damn, he switched up on me. He was fake as fuck. What the fuck? Right? He gonna stand. It don't matter if that other Edomite, if you get in tune with him, it don't matter if you wrong or right. They gonna stand with they, they gonna stand with they people, bro. 
We as Israelites, especially black men, we don't do that shit, man. We do what this nigga was doing on the screen in that movie Django. That's what we do. And that's what that guy was doing. He was going to Hassan Campbell. And he was saying shit like, nah. The Asian guy, he was like, he's like, he's like, nah, you know, um, he was like, nah, you know, um, he's a brother. You know, he's a brother in everything. You know, he's a brother. And he like, no, he's not a brother, bro. I don't care what he's he said. He said, so what about all the stuff he has done for us? On um, the Moabite guy, he said, he said, he said, he said, so what about all the stuff he has done for us? You know, he's been in the community. He's helped and stuff like that. It don't matter, bro. Those things that he did that benefit our people, it's, it's, it's a whole, whole bunch of shit that, that has to come, you know, that they have to do, right? Um, the Bible speaks off a gift, um, destroys the heart. Oppression makes a wise man mad, but a gift destroys the heart, right? Just because you get a gift and that's what happened to that brother, a gift destroyed his heart you know it made him say oh shit well he's done stuff for the art community and stuff like that and it destroyed his heart man because if you do it that way that's how we always lose everything people come in they give us gifts and then our people start to love them and say oh man they're so nice they help us and everything and then at the end of the day they own all the goddamn buildings they own all our neighborhoods and shit like that because you got trick a gift destroyed in your heart the bible says never trust your enemy in the apocrypha your enemy may give you a gift, right? What happened to uh, 2 Maccabees chapter 7 with the seven brothers? The, when it got down to the last brother, the king tried to offer the last brother riches to be the king's friend in a high position. He tried to offer him gifts to go against the Lord and sin against the Lord. But he didn't do it, though. He's still strong, man. You see, you got to watch out for guys like that, man, that want to take up for the other nations so bad. Because these are the guys that's going to be deliver you up to be afflicted. These is the guys that's going to trade. These is the guys that going to make a deal with the other nations. You know, that's going to get you jammed up because they trust them. They love them. This is how uh, when you look at God, when you look at a lot of Native American tribes, this is how they got took down. They had traders, man. They gave up information on them. And traded, man, and set, and set their own people up. For what? For gifts. Those traders were getting offered gifts and things like that. And they traded, man. So you got to watch out for those guys. When you see a guy doing that, you cut him off. You watch him forever, man. He's done. When he starts doing that shit, he going against his own nation for just to stand up for another nation. Yeah, and then that's what the guy was doing, you know. It was so sad. I'm like, man, I had to come make a video. I'm like, damn, man. I'm like... Damn, bro, you coming at your own brother and, 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 and all that. He trying to stand up for another one of your brothers. You see what I'm saying? And, and it's always, it happens all the time. Anytime something happens and we got to get on one of the other names, this is why we ain't got none. This is why we ain't got no power. This is why we ain't strong. This is why we weak and pathetic, man. Because anytime we got to get on somebody on the other nation's ass, here come these other guys of our own nation. Here they come. No, no, they good people. No, I don't know. I don't say that. No, I don't do that. No, we rock with them. I mean, I'll tell you another story. Here, here another story. Boom. I'm at work. I'm at the plantation. I'm at work, right? Um, Me and this brother, you know, we had a little disagreement over something, but it was just some confusion. He, We didn't. Um, Other people was in the middle of it, so we just had to get an understanding. We had to get some things straightened out. So we ended up talking to each other. We get some things straightened out, you know, Um, and I, and it, was, it, was, it was over Sunday, you know, some petty shit. And I was like, pretty much breaking it down. I was like, uh, damn, bro, if I would have knew that this was you. You know what I mean? Because sometimes like, like, all right, we, we do. We was trucking. Right. So I took a truck because I was told to take it from the office people. But it was like his shift for the truck or something like that. And I got back kind of late because that happens. You on the highway shit happens. And I was like, damn, bro, if I would have knew it was yours, I would have never even took this one. Because, you know, they told me go out there and just pick one. So I picked one and it happened to be his. Right. But fast forward, you know, um, I was like, damn, you know, because because you a brother, you know, we we barely even know each other. But I was like, man, because you a brother. And he told me, he said, he said, um, he, he said, he said, he said, yeah, bro. He said, he said, yeah, it's cool. He said, he said, he said, it's cool. It don't, it don't matter. Like for me, it don't matter. He said, he was like, I was walking. I was, we was done with our conversation. He, he stopped me. He was like, yeah, it really don't matter to me. Like all people, bro. Like, 
I'm I'm good with all people. It don't matter what color you is or whatever. I'm like, nah, I'm cause I, cause you know I'm coming like nah for you cause you a brother. He on some shit like nah, you know I don't, I don't really look at it that way. You know it's just all people and shit like me. What the bam? And then Edomite come up and then he get to talking to the Edomite and then they all cool and shit like that. And I'm looking at him like, what the fuck? But I understand that everybody don't get down like us. You know what I mean? And this and this is what's gonna separate us, especially in the times where these things are gonna um cause you your life. You know. When all hell break loose, you got to know these things, man. Yeah, your ass get out there, run into some Edomites, right? Um, they going to put you on front line, nigga. They going to put you on front line. You and, uh, Yeah, yeah, you could come. You could come with us. And then you're going to find yourself on the front line for some shit, man. And you know what happened to those on the front line. They they always die first. I mean, that's just what it is, right? And, and, that's, and that's what it's going to be, you know? So, I mean, our people just got to... Wake up, this is Deuteronomy, right? 7, verse 6. It says, for thou art a holy people. So the word holy means to set aside. That means you are holy people from all the other people, right? It says, and to the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Not all, but no, it's just everybody. No, uh, it says we were chosen to be a special people from all the other people. Now, now check this out. It says, uh, and then people say, well, yeah, you know, but all people are equal, though. We're just all people. But this says above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So the Lord chose us to be above all people on the face of the earth, man. So how the fuck do you look like standing up for another another nation against your own people? It says, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he has sworn unto your fathers, and, had, and um, has the Lord brought you out of a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondage from the hand of the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. So now we have a big problem with, with wacky tacky so-called Christians right because right what you guys are saying about the fault is that that the Deuteronomy 7 starting at verse 6 7 and 8 is saying that the lord chose israel to be his people and he's saying that he did it because he had an oath that he sworn into our fathers and the oath that he sworn into our fathers is that he would and go all the way back to verse 6 that he chose us to be a holy and special people and above all people on the earth so what you guys are saying now is that now the Lord went back on his oath, broke his oath, right? And he's no longer choosing us to be a holy, special people, but not just a holy, special people, but he's not choosing us to be above all people on earth. And then you guys are saying that anybody could be saved with us and get salvation with us and be with us and be on the same level as us. Because what you're saying is, is anybody could become an Israelite. That's what you're saying. So you're saying the Lord broke this oath. He made an oath. And, and, and he sworn these things into our father. So now what we say in the Hebrew Israelites, we say, no, the Lord is keeping that oath. And, and the thing that he sworn, he's keeping it true because he's going to take the Israelites and the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans and put us back above all people. You see how simple it is, man? This is Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. It says, now Israel, right? What does the Lord thy God require thee? So this is what the Lord requires us, right? So a lot of people say, well, that's Old Testament. Uh, okay, so if the Lord required this of us, right? He still requires it to, to this day. It says, and then this is what it is. But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. And I'll prove it to you. Watch this. So you say, okay, that's Old Testament, right? So it says, fear the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways. Or in all his ways, right? So let's see. Let's prove it to you that, it, that he still requires that same thing today. And, nothing, and nothing's changed, right? Because it's the final chapter, right? Now this is First John chapter 2, right? Verse five, it says, but no, verse four, no, <laughs> verse three, but hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments, right? 
So if you fear him, you keep his commandments, right? And then, just like it said, to serve him is keeping his commandments. Just like it said in Deuteronomy 10. And all the way in the um in the Old Testament, right? And then it says, verse 4. He that say, I know him and keep not his commandments is a liar and the truth is not in him. If you're a wacky tacky Christian and you say, um, you know the Lord, but you say that we ain't got to keep his commandments no more. You're a liar. That's literally what that, that's literally what it means. Verse five, but whoso keepeth his word and him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that say he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walked. So when you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 10, uh, verse 12, just straight to the point, though, it says the Lord thy God require thee, but to fear the Lord thy God to walk in all his the same thing. It's the same thing, man. Now, verse 13, to keep the commandments of the Lord. So this is talking about the same thing. So how did they so how did how did our people keep the commandments of the Lord in the Old Testament? It's the same way that it's, it's saying the same thing. So even the New Testament is still the same thing. We got to try to keep the commandments to the best of our ability. Now, we understand that there was times where we were under King Solomon, under King David, shit, all the way down to Zedekiah, right? Uh, and we had rulership. It was easier for us. It, we could keep the commandments a little bit easier, not saying that we ever kept them perfect, right? But we also understand that we're in captivity today. So, yes, we are rehearsing the righteous acts. We can't keep the commandments perfect, right? But that's the whole point. And... Ver uh, chapters like first corinthians 15 starting around verse 50 52 the lord is going to make us perfect and then that's when you go to jeremiah 31 starting around verse 31 then that's when we're going to get the new covenant and then that's where that's why we're not going to have to teach each other anymore in the kingdom saying no the lord because we're all should know him from least to great because he's going to put what the law statutes commandments in our inward part right uh, and then when you put that together, right, our fleshly bodies can't keep the law, such as commandments perfect. But when you combine that with first Corinthians chapter 15 and you understand the spiritual body that we're going to get. No, it's not just a spiritual body that's inside of you right now. It's a literal new body that we're going to get because that's why it says in first Corinthians 15 that you should be changed in a twinkle in the eye. Right. Then we're going to be able to, those new bodies, we're going to be able to keep the law, statutes, commandments perf perfect. Therefore, there's going to be no sin, right? And therefore, we're not going to get judged, right? But for the other nations, if you go to Zechariah 14, it still say that there's going to be a judgment on all the families of the earth if they don't come up to keep the um, feast of um, uh, tabernacles. So if there's still a judgment or a punishment, that means that they're not going to be perfect. So that means that there's a difference between them and the Israelites because we know the Israelites are getting perfect bodies. That means that they're not. So that shows you a difference, man. Right. Um, fact check all that. It's all facts. Um, verse 14 says, behold, the heavens and heaven of heavens is the Lord thy God in the earth also with all that therein is. Only the Lord had delight in thy fathers to love them. Not all everybody's fathers, but love in thy fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to love them. And he chose their seed because what? What is Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That's a seed line, right? A bloodline, offspring. And he chose their seed after them. Now watch this. This is the kicker. Even you above all people as it is this day. He didn't just choose them. He chose them above all people and nothing has changed about that man nothing has changed about that so that's the point man it just hurts me when i see these guys going against their own people standing up for another nation you know we we know we don't never do that you know you got brothers man and hey, your brother you riding with your brother you know what i mean somebody else outside the other household hey shit it is what it is if you smack my brother bro i don't care if if he was in the wrong we getting whooped if we don't if we don't do nothing about it we getting whooped if, if if my brother was in the room and you over at our house and you still off my brother, I'm stealing off you. I'm stealing off you. It, we we I'm, we just we just teeing off on each other, man. That's how it is. So it's so even on a bigger sense, that's how it is with the, with the nations, man. Um, what happened with um with King David and the Edomite? 
right? The Eden might try to come back to King David bragging about um, and lying, saying that he did something to King Saul because we understand that King Saul died in battle. Him and his sons died. Um, were they fleeing? I'm roughly paraphrasing. You could correct me. I believe they was fleeing and um, they got captured or they got put to death in battle, right? But the Eden might try to come back to King David and he was lying. And King David, even though, and you know the story with King David and King Saul, how they was into it. They was against each other. Where it really it was King Saul against King David, right? But you know the story that King David still stood strong for his brother. Now, King Saul, which is his brother because they were the same people, same blood. Um, The first king of Israel put King David through hell. But when it came into the in, in the face of this Edomite, King David still stood on the side of his own people, even though King Saul put him through hell. So that's the perfect example. That I'm gonna say salvation to the election.